tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. As you all know, theater is one of the greatest art forms. And this is a dynamic reflection of the rich culture and heritage of the European Union. And tonight, very, very special guests from the European Union delegation of the Philippines are joining us together with representatives from seven top universities as we launch here on V81 Radio, Teatro Europa. <coughs> Magandang gabi, uh, Gracie. Uh, it's a pleasure being uh, in your program. Uh, I want also to say thank you to all the university directors and actors of Teatro Europa. Without them, this project would not have been possible. And obviously to all your audience, I think you have a big audience and I'm, I hope we will be able to entertain them <clears throat> this, uh, this evening, this afternoon. So how yes. the idea came, came about? I mean, uh, the delegation has been working on, on culture for quite some time. And we have basically worked with uh, poetry, with uh, cinema. We, we will have our Cine Europa Festival coming uh, very soon. So these were traditional activities, and uh, my colleague Robert uh, last year uh, threw the ball and said, why don't we do some theater? And indeed, it was a great uh, initiative, and here we are uh, about to, to start with um, Teatro Europa. And I'm very impressed uh, by all our universities. Uh, I was watching the teasers, and I'm, I'm really impressed of what they did, given the present circumstances. Well, uh... I was actually observing one. Of, I was in a in a in one of the plays of the of the of my kids' school, and then I just noticed that um, that uh, most of the plays being uh, shown here in in the country are mainly uh, U.S. I mean, popular, popular, but uh, mainly uh, Broadway. I, I mean, American uh, plays. So, so um, I thought of having our sharing since uh we have quite uh interesting or uh, actually a lot of uh yeah. european plays you know and uh from 27 eu countries so why not so that actually was the the root of it all <laughs> and then um also uh well the universities well as uh as they said before you know the the plan was to to have um to have all of this live in <coughs> several uh, locations uh, in Paco Park, and but apart from that, we also wanted to host all these live performances in universities. So we actually um, went to, to most of the universities in Manila, and then uh, we we were trying to to have them host us, and gladly they were they were so welcoming so. But again, the sad news of uh, this pandemic came in, so it it had well we had to to really uh, be creative and uh, do an alternative. So, and luckily, these students or these theater groups from these seven uh, universities were still willing to go on this initiative, virtual theater Europa, which is I'm I'm very glad that, that they did and. Uh, and as uh, as uh, Rafa said, um, it's all, it's all impressive. I mean, uh, I would imagine that if it were live, it was even maybe even better. But uh, this one is already impressive. So yeah. and it's exciting because Correct. these plays are coming from seven different uh, fantastic writers from seven different member nations of the European Union and will be performed by seven top universities. Can you imagine how auspicious? Seven, seven, seven. You know, so we've got a great lineup of plays this September from the European Union of the Philippines. Um, it was good to show all the variety of, of plays we have. I mean, this is one point I wanted to make. It's like we have very, I mean, classics from Moliere and Tirso de Molina to very contemporary ones like the Czech play, the, the Green Room. Uh, but also, I mean, I was amazed by the, um, I mean, I'm Spanish, so I, I had a little bit of a say in the selection of the Spanish play, which is a very classic one. And then when I saw what uh, 
uh, the Colegio San Juan de Letran has uh, done with it is amazing with using this kind of uh, social media approach and, you know, calling each other like uh, via, you know, one of the um, apps. So I thought that was a great, a great innovation. So I'm really looking forward to watch them all. Um, also, again, a big thanks to the universities, to the directors who have, you know, encouraged the, the students and the actors to perform this. And luckily, we will, this will be alive. I mean, this is something that's going to stay there. Uh, we hope that many will watch in Teatro Europa uh, PH. So this is the Facebook page. So Ang Everyman is a drama that centers on morality and tells a universal story of a man in need a man in need, but abandoned by all those around him. So, lahat ng friends niya, lahat ng kasama niya, yung cousins niya, and everyone. Tapos, uh, bumisita siya na, ni Beth, sabi, sama ka na sa akin, pero sabi ni every man, uh, pwede bang may kasama siya? Tapos sabi ni Beth, sige, uh, harap ka kasama mo. But ev- lahat ng tinanong niya, na kung sino pwede sumama sa kanya, said na, I don't wanna go with you to this journey. So, he was abandoned by everyone. So, yun yung, yun yung journey niya to his fate. So, si Gab Gonzalez will play every man. Um, ang pinaka-challenge yan, kasi kami yung pinaka-last, we were the last school to be asked to join Teatro, uh, Teatro Europa. I think like uh, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, we were asked. So, I said, I don't think I have 20 students. So, I, uh, so we conceptualized so one of my assistant directors will also play another role, but someone slightly smaller role to think that maybe one character could play all the characters because uh, in this world, we are all like we are one of those characters to someone who is every man. And but the, but the challenge was um, doing it. Uh, directing it um, usually we we there we we meet at night because they have uh, online classes and then uh, we also updated the script so that it would be a bit um, conversational English because uh, parang 16th century pat yung 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 play so uh, yung pinaka challenge is this to think what can we do next for one ca- one actress to do all the characters. <laughs> Well, so, the story of Tango kasi is about family and a generation gap. So we are the age the age range of our characters are from grandparents to to parents to children. So a teenager pala. So um the challenge is being our age and having to play the roles of of grandparents, which which is very challenging for us and it's a story about how the, this family is very magulo so magkaiba yung age gap nila so their uh, thinking about things is very different and their ideas about life is very different and it's a story about how arthur uh, uh, rafa it uh, tries to put everything in order and for you to find out if he does succeed, you have to watch Tango. <laughs> Min Teatro was founded in 2015, but we reestablished the whole um, body in 2018. They make me young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. You should. I, I. You know. I. I. Of course. Of course. Uh, they don't. Uh, I keep telling them. I don't know whether they believe me. But I have fun working with them. I don't know if they're having fun working with me. <laughs> I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. So you have found your fountain of youth, Dennis. Working with people of Mint, guiding and honing the teatro, Mint Teatro. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.